So I made a video talking about Ryan Tannehill and sort of debating uh, how much of his uh, great season last year was just from play action. Uh, but I found something interesting while looking at data for that. And so I, I want to talk about Philip Rivers and his relation to play action because I actually think this is very interesting and this is something that Colts fans are going to want to take a look out for. So the first of two graphs I made for the Tannehill video, uh, I'll show here. I'm actually going to show both graphs, but uh, just bear with me. Uh, so uh, you look at the, uh, the first graph here again. If you watch my Tannehill video, I'm sure I'm going to go over a couple of things again. But you know what? I think it'll be more. I think it'll be interesting doing it this way as well in relation to Rivers. And the reason why is because, you know, first look at this graph. And you see four categories. Uh, the first is what your passer rating was when running play action. The second is uh, your just overall uh, passer rating. So passer rating in general in the 2019 season. Uh, then there's the differential, so how much better were you when running uh, play action? And finally, the percentage. How often did you run play action? So at the top, you notice you have guys like Gardner Minshew and Jameis Winston. Uh, so, you know, they have very drastic differentials, uh, but that's also partially because their passer rating started lower. You then have guys like Tannehill and Breeze who got a lot better uh, and you had fantastic passer ratings when running play action. Uh, and then at the bottom, you have Russell Wilson and Kirk Cousins also makes sense. Both teams have, you know, effective running games that you do have to fear. Uh, I think the most curious one is Phillip Rivers, who is a solid 24 and a half points better in terms of passer rating when running play action than just in general, meaning that he had the fifth biggest difference in terms of how good he is when running play action to how good he is just in general out of anybody in the league. Uh, so that's interesting. But maybe even more interesting is this next chart that I'm going to show. This is the top 32 quarterbacks in terms of play action attempts. So that's what this is. Uh, and what you see the number to the right of them is going to be how, how big of a percent was there for them to run play action? So again, play action percentage, you know, how often on a given snap did you run play action? You notice that Lamar Jackson at the top, on top left, uh, is, you know, one out of every, basically four out of every 10 throws was play action, which is just crazy. But what's interesting about, in Rivers' case, is that if you look at the bottom right, the Indianapolis Colts ran play action with Phillip Rivers the fourth least amount of times of quarterbacks who made this list. So I find that very interesting. The other interesting thing is that if you look at the top left, a uh, little uh, you know, top middle left, uh, you're going to notice that Jacoby Brissett is sitting at 28.2, which uh, has him currently tied for sixth most in terms of passer, uh, uh, you know, times that you would run play action. So what does this tell me? Well, it's simple. The Indianapolis Colts think that running play action makes a lot of sense, and Philip Rivers is good at running play action. I mean, that just seems pretty obvious, pretty simple right there. And if you look at his uh, chart from last year via Next Gen Stats, uh, this is actually pretty crazy. So this is what his passer rating would be through each quadrant. Uh, I don't have any more details than this. I don't have the touchdowns, interceptions, because for some reason, uh, pro football focus is down. I'm not sure what's going on there. Uh, so that's typically what I use. But this will certainly still suffice with next-gen stats. And they made a cool graph, which is nice. But what you notice is that, you know, uh, when it's from the line of scrimmage to 20 yards down the field, he is very good. Uh, you know, before the line of scrimmage, he's still pretty good. I mean, the left side, not so much, but overall, it's pretty good. A lot of that is just because he's throwing to Austin Eckler, who's running for a bunch of yards. Uh, but deep down the field, you notice that he's atrocious. I mean, it's just, it's it's bad. You know, uh, he has uh, literally down the field past 20 yards in the middle of the field. It's just a 30.2 passer rating, which is, you know, over you know, nearly 60 points uh, worse than the league average, which is just a mess. It's also terrible to the right, and it's actually above league average to the left, but that's probably just because he threw a couple touchdowns there or maybe just didn't have a couple interceptions as those can throw these things off with a small sample size. But as a whole, you can clearly tell that throwing the ball deep down the field was not his strength last year. And honestly, you don't have to look at the numbers to see that. Like, watch on this one. Uh, it's going to be a cover two zone. Uh, there's a receiver running deep over the middle. This is not a great throw to make, uh, but this is kind of a situation where it's a blowout at this point. There's only two minutes left. The score is 39 to 10. Uh, most quarterbacks would just, you know, honestly take a knee and run out the clock. Uh, Phil Rivers doesn't like to do that. He likes to just, you know, go down swinging, which I kind of like, even though it isn't going to help his statistics at all. Uh, but anyways, uh, there's a reason why I'm showing this play, even though it is kind of a worthless play, where once the ball is snapped, you notice that 
there is a way this play could work. Not a great way, but there's a way. So there's two safeties who are deep, uh, and then he has his receiver who he wants to hit, who's not quite as deep, but he's running full speed towards the end zone, whereas both the safeties are pretty much in a standstill. Uh, you have Harris, who's actually on the bottom of the screen, who's uh, sort of running in the complete opposite direction. Meanwhile, you have uh, Smith, who's, you know, basically for this play to work, Rivers would have to put the ball into the end zone. It would have to be that far, where that way it gives his receiver enough time to try and outrun the safety and get into the end zone and get a touchdown. If you're going to make a deep ball, be a completion, that's what you have to do here. Rivers knows this. Rivers is a smart player. Uh, you know, he's been in the league for a while. So he is going to make a throw deep, and he's going to try to get that far. But it's just nowhere close, and it gets, ends up getting cut off way short. Uh, and that results in an interception, and that was the game. Uh, you could argue that there was some uh, pressure that might have affected him a little. But again, I'm kind of showing one play sort of as an example of what I've seen plenty of times, which is his deep ball just was not there last year. And his deep ball used to be a huge part of his game. And I do think that his arm strength has deteriorated a little bit. I think that I've seen enough on tape for me to say that. And so I think a lot of Colts fans and just NFL fans in general were a bit confused by the signing for them to go out and get Phillip Rivers because they're kind of sitting here and saying, hey, wait a second, you know, why are we going out and getting a guy who has relied on his arm strength for a decent chunk of his career for because that's a big part of his game why are we going out and getting him when his arm strength isn't what it once was but the reason is because Indianapolis they see something else in him that they value let's watch some play action passes from Phil Rivers and just to have more fun of it let's watch some play action passes from Phil Rivers against the Indianapolis Colts why don't we this is going to be play action. You have a receiver running over the middle. So again, this is your typical play action. You get players over the middle of the field to move in. They get a bit out of position because they're expecting a run. Uh, and then you can throw over the top of them. That's the way this works. And right when this ball is snapped, you're going to notice that this is actually pretty well defended by Indianapolis. Uh, they got pretty good linebacking core. They typically defend things pretty well. Uh, and so, you know, good try by uh, the Chargers. Just didn't quite work out too well, right? Well... Not exactly. See, this can still work out. You know, you have a Chargers receiver who's running deep towards the sideline, which is pushing the defensive back who's in that area further deep. And so there is still a gap in coverage where this can work. But basically for this to totally work, Rivers is going to kind of have to just sort of put some air under the ball. He can't allow the linebackers to potentially leap up and, you know, knock it down or even intercept it. But he's going to have just perfect touch on this one, which allows it to be a completion. Again, that's just a really good play from Rivers, and it's off of play action. And this one's even a little bit further down the field. I think I believe this one would count as further than 20 yards down the field. Uh, but I think it just kind of goes to show that, you know, he definitely can be very effective in this type of system. Like, watch, this one's another one. What's going to happen on this play is that, uh, first things first, it's going to be a cover two zone. You have another receiver running over the middle. Again, very similar idea. And uh, once again, right when this ball is snapped, you notice that Indianapolis doing a very good job of taking away this route. They didn't really fall for the play action too much. And so they're pretty prepared. And in fairness, they didn't really sell the play action too much. So that's a part of it. But again, you know, so this is a situation where, uh, you know, they're trying to run play action. They're not really doing it that well. But Rivers is really good at ty these types of throws regardless. So even if the play action doesn't totally work, these types of plays can still work, and watch how he's going to make a very accurate throw that results in a completion, and they're able to get a, a big gain in that one. Again, I believe that's another one that was actually over 20 yards down the field, but of course, his problem isn't really with the ones that are 22 yards down the field. His problem is with the ones that are 40 yards down the field. And so I think this is what Indianapolis is going to do. I think they're basically going to do what the Titans did. I mean, listen, they saw what Tennessee did firsthand. You know, they're in the same division. The Colts even went out and drafted a running back in the second round. So, you know, they drafted Jonathan Taylor. So there's that uh, where I think they probably are trying to work on the running game a little bit because they want teams to fear a potential running game, which can open things up for play action. I think there's some real logic to this. I really do. I also think it's worth um, bringing up the fact that we don't know for sure if this is Rivers' only problem. I mean, it's it's also worth mentioning that teams that don't run play action very much tend to run play action pretty well because, you know, their opposing teams are not expecting it as much if you don't run it as much. And also, I mean, listen, the guy's 38, man. He's going to turn 39 in just a couple of months. So, I mean, maybe all that's deteriorated is his arm strength a little bit and he will be able to bounce back and play at a high level. 
or maybe it hasn't. And maybe his arm strength is just the first thing that's going to go, and maybe he's going to fall off a cliff in 2020. It's you. Can, it's really impossible to say. So there are inherent risks, but this is their strategy. This is their plan, and I think there is definite logic behind it. And I think it's uh, it's a lot uh, bigger of a deal than just, hey, let's get a quarterback so we can sell some jerseys. There is actual football logic behind this, and I do understand it. Will it work? I mean, it remains to be seen. Is he going to be the next Tannehill? It's possible. Uh, obviously, the, it's not really a fair comparison because Tannehill is, what, 10 years younger? Uh, so definitely not a fair uh, comparison in that, right? But just in terms of the, could he look like he's kind of washed, but then go to a new team and really thrive there with a similar system? I could see it. I could see it. That's all I'm going to say. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.